Um, people often ask me, uh, Richard, what do, you, what do you do? And these are people that obviously don't know me. Um, and my short answer is, uh, well, I direct a public policy group. Now, the larger answer is that uh, we're a group that's working to shore up society's pillars of, of life, uh, marriage, and, and uh, religious freedom. And this work takes me across the state where I get to see a lot of cool places and, and meet a lot of interesting people. But it also brings me into the realm of conflict. Uh, as you can imagine, dealing with the definition of marriage and religious freedom uh, would bring me to city councils and commissions like right here in Bowling Green where we uh, talk about these issues from a biblical worldview. Um, and I've had several instances this past year of, of conflict, which um, most people... Um, we want to avoid that, and I really would prefer to avoid conflict as well. I don't seek it out, but I come from the conviction that as followers of Jesus, as a follower of Jesus, uh, that he calls us to be salt, the salt of the earth, the preserving agent. He calls us to be light. Light uh, lets you see where you're going. I spoke to uh, uh, three different city commission meetings across Kentucky um, and have had, had experienced conflict in a, in a very... Um, hurtful way, I guess. In one of these meetings, I was presenting on the, the dangers of a fairness ordinance, and, and a lady afterwards came out to me in the, in the uh, uh, auditorium or the, the, the overflow area and said, Richard, your view and in your group and your people caused the death of my nephew. Now, I didn't know that person, didn't know her nephew, but just because I had a certain view, she uh, blamed me for um, a tragic uh, situation in her family. In another city commission meeting, actually it was a human rights commission meeting, somebody said, uh, after I had presented, said, <clears throat> um, the, the, the law enforcement community is monitoring outside hate groups, and um, people from, the, from outside this area are coming in, and they're fo fomenting hate and stirring up trouble. And then this lady looked at me and said, Richard, are, are you from around here? You know, implicating me with one of these outside hate groups. Um, been in a number of debates with transgender activists, uh, leading gay rights activists in Kentucky. So yes, there is a lot of conflict in, uh, in the work that I do. So, so the next time that somebody asks me, Richard, what do you do? Uh, my response will be, I go into other communities across Kentucky with unpopular opinions, and I end up getting called a lot of bad things. Um, and there's an element of truth to that. And I don't really seek this out. But again, it comes from the conviction that God calls his people to be um, salt and light and to disciple the nations. I want to talk about one meeting in particular, and actually that meeting happened right here in Bowling Green, and some of you uh, may recall because you were there. It's where Bowling Green City Commission was considering a SOGI ordinance. That's a sexual orientation and gender identity ordinance. Our concern was that it would violate religious freedom, that it was not a good policy. We brought up a number of um, uh, questions to the commission that I don't think they had considered. And uh, we'd actually planned and organized um, many people from different churches to attend. We put together talking points. We talked about when you speak, you, you, you are speaking graciously and respectfully. We ended up going to that meeting with a pretty sizable group. We had 12 people, I think, that registered to speak. The other side had 50 or 60 that were registered to speak. I had gotten up to speak and shared my piece, and I think for the most part our side did pretty well. Um, not perfect, but pretty well. I had stayed longer than most everybody else at that meeting. I wanted to see what the other side was saying, what they were sharing. And uh, it was uh, getting late in the evening. I said, I, I, I said to myself, I need to get home. My family's waiting for me. But as I looked around the room, uh, most of my friends and allies were gone. The pastors in the community uh, were gone, and I'm not criticizing them. They had to get home to their families as well. But I was uh, calculating the that I had to leave. I had to go through this crowd out into the overflow area where there was a big screen TV and my face was plastered on it. And then I had to walk back to my car in the dark. And when this all registered with me, I thought, this is not fun. I, I was a little afraid. And then I thought, is this how people in the LGBT community feel when they feel like they might lose a job or be kicked out of a home or they're simply marginalized um, for, for the lifestyle that they've um, pursued? The fearness um, that that community 
had testified at that meeting um, that evening, I was able to identify with to some extent. Francis Schaeffer uh, used to say, there were only two kinds of people in the world. Those who are at war with God and those who used to be at war with Him. And this tells me that I have much more in common with a sinner who's apart from God than a perfect and sinless and holy God. And apart from the redemption of Christ who cleanses me from all sin, I am the same as any other sinner. I shared this, this important point on a radio broadcast with a pastor friend of mine. We do a weekly program out of Hopkinsville, a live program every Wednesday, and I shared this on air. He'd not heard me say this, but I think I alarmed him a little bit because he shot up and looked at me kind of funny. And then afterwards, we were talking about it, and um, he said, Richard, that was a, I didn't know what to think at the moment, but that was a really good point. He said, you were, you were right on. Allow me to make a few suggestions, if I could, about how to better engage this issue. Um, first, I, I think that we in the conservative church need to recalibrate what we're fighting for. Um, it's not an us against them, but it should be us as God's people in the conservative, Bible-believing, evangelical church. It should be us against the things that cripple and undermine human flourishing. It should be us against the things that short-circuit relationships and true happiness. This means that we're for people. It means that we are for their well-being and for their happiness. Um, God calls us to be faithful to stand for His truth, but He also calls us to be faithful and to love people. Remember the two great commandments, right? It's to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second is just like it, to love our neighbors as ourselves. This means that we're not called to win every argument, but we are called to win people. And secondly, we need to discover empathy. And uh, this is what Jesus did. Jesus was empathetic with people. Not a very popular word, by the way, in the conservative movement, but it's something that makes us human when we can empathize with somebody who is different from us. I want to close with a, um, a tough situation I was in a couple of years ago when uh, the marriage uh, battle was raging. I was speaking at a, at a church one Sunday morning, and in the middle of my message on why marriage is important to society, there were a group of young people that got up and walked out right in the middle of my message. Never a good feeling when that happens. Um, but afterwards, there was a, a young lady who came up to me as I was um, greeting people as they were leaving. Uh, she was angry and said, why uh, are you hating on me and my people? What, what have we ever done to you? And she wanted to engage in, in, a, in a dialogue. We didn't have time for that, but I, I gave her my card and I said, give me a call and we'll get together for coffee sometime, hoping that she would not call. Um, but she did. Later that afternoon, I got a phone call and she insisted that we, that we meet. And we ended up meeting at a local coffee shop. And I had come prepared uh, with a list of Bible passages that spoke of marriage and human sexuality. I wanted to make sure I had um, everything in order. And uh, as, I, as I walked through the door of that coffee shop, there were three people sitting at a table, and they were all glaring at me. And I thought at that moment, Richard, what did you get yourself into? Uh, I was ready to walk out. But I sat down, and, and uh, the first thing I said was, I said, look, this could be either a really, really good meeting if we... Uh, listen to each other if we try to understand each other, or it could be a really, really bad meeting if we just bring out our talking points and uh, try to win an argument. So I got to listen to this, this woman across from me who identified as a lesbian. She had a pink Bible right next to her, and um, she shared a bit of her story. She opened up and told me she grew up in the church. She got in trouble. Um, Eventually, she, she was kicked out of church, marginalized, but she shared her pain. She shared her struggles. Um, she, one of the interesting things in this conversation was that she said, you know, Richard, my partner, my significant other is my everything. That is, and without her, I would be nothing. And at that moment, I, I said, you know, when I had a chance to speak, I said, if you are a follower of Jesus, your 
primary identity is in Christ. He's your everything. That might have been the most important thing that I said, along with just listening to her, just showing her that I didn't hate her. I wasn't there to judge her, but I was a human being just like she was, hopefully offering grace to her, the same grace that Christ offered to me. When we engage in truth and grace, I want to close and and, um, welcome Andrew up in just a moment. But when we engage in truth and grace, I believe that it changes people. Kindness is attractive uh, and love overcomes the hardest of hearts. And it throws the world for a loop when we truly love enemies of the cross. Um, Please remember, and this is so important for us, that none of us have, have anything to boast about because each of us were once an enemy of that same cross. And this puts us on the same plane as those in the LGBT community. Remember that in your next conversation. Um, We need to maintain our biblical convictions. I am not suggesting for one minute to water down any of the biblical ethic on human sexuality, not one bit, because it's not helpful to people. That hurts them. God gives us this biblical ethic, these rules, because He loves us and He doesn't want us to hurt ourselves. But what I'm suggesting is that we couple that biblical ethic with kindness. We need to lead with grace, but land on truth. And when the body of Christ lives out these truths boldly, then I believe that we're going to begin to see people change. Thank you, and may God bless you.